And my next guest says that we've become so focused in this country on microaggressions that we have lost sight of macroaggressions that are happening to women before our eyes all around the world. Ayan Hersey Ali is a human rights activist, Hoover Institution fellow, and author of Heretic, Why Islam Needs a Reformation Now. She is founder of the AHA Foundation that believes in liberty for all. Ayan, thank you very much for being here. You know, you point out that there's a lot of hypocrisies embedded in the way that we are handling all of this, the way that we're treating these people. You point out the LGBTQ flag that was flown at the U.S. Embassy in Kabul just a short time ago. I remember covering that story, you know, that that, that flag was sort of a symbol uh, for this State Department of what they care about. And now you think that, um, that there's a real double edge here. Absolutely, Martha. And this is tragic. Um, and I know so many people have said that. The first time I had, you know, whisperings of we are going to withdraw from Afghanistan the way that we are, I said that is stupid, irresponsible, dangerous. You see all of that unfolding. I had listened to people make a different case. I don't mean to say I told you so, but I want to tell you that if you look at what happened in the last I don't know, um, since the killing of George Floyd, um, I think we went into paroxysms in this country of self-flagellation, that we are systemically racist. There's, uh, you know, America is just a very bad place. We are very bad people. And then we entered this rabbit hole of microaggressions. And then we make a decision like this one. And it's one of a macroaggression. The Taliban mean business. They are really cruel people. They are bad people with a terrible ideology. And we're not prepared for it because our Navy has been told to read Ibram X. Kendi's How to Be an Anti-Racist. Because we are, th this, is, this is the thing that we've been talking about over and over again in the last few years. And no one took us seriously. And now you look at it, the world is looking at America. They're looking at this conflict and they're thinking about good guys and bad guys. The Taliban are the bad guys. You look at the White House and what do you think? Twiddle dee and twiddle dum. It is incompetence taken to cartoonish levels. I just watched that uh, press conference with Jake Sullivan. One contradiction after the other, one lie after the other. For heaven's sake, they don't even know how to lie anymore. You know, I want to put up on the screen a picture that we have of, I believe it's a U.S. Marine, it's an American service member holding a baby. And I'm also thinking about what Laura Logan was saying about the groundswell in this country, because there are amazing things going on behind the scenes. You have all of these organizations that are working on their own to try to get people out because the State yeah. Department was not able to get these people the paperwork they needed and to get it done in an expeditious way. So you've got charities, you've got Catholic charities, you've got all kinds of organizations across the country. You've got senators uh, on Capitol Hill who are working on their own or organizations with trying to get people out. Um, so there is an underlying very strong good heart in this country that is really feeling the pain of these people and responding to it in an enormous way. And yet there's this sort of disconnect of, of what we're hearing at these podiums. And this was always there. Americans were always like that. They rise to the occasion. It's absolutely true that if you ask the average American, should we get out of that war? They would have said, please, because Americans don't want to wage continuous wars. But when the calling comes, when they see these images, Americans will give everything they have to rescue, to resuscitate, to help. So this whole notion that we are a racist country, that we're bigoted, all of that, let's throw that out of a window. What is true and what is really alarming is that the people who run our business, the people we elected to run our government are totally incompetent. I listened to one more thing. It's one of those little lines that just goes by where Jake Sullivan says there are groups of people that the Taliban are allowing through, Americans, third nationals, and then he said SIV holders. The Taliban, look at the civ holders. These are the people they think of as treasoners who worked with Americans. They are not going to let them through their checkpoints. Are you kidding me? Who does he think we are? That is the disconnect. The yeah. general American public, everyone here, 
just wants this to end. They want to help as much as they can. But it is this White House that started it. It was absolutely unnecessary. Seven months into their tenure, there was no need to pull out of Afghanistan and no need to pull out of Afghanistan the way they did. And that is a stain on them. Shame on them. I am. Thank you. Always good to see you. Uh, good to have you here. I and Hersey Alley. Um, I encourage everybody to read the piece that she wrote uh, and the book as well. Thank you, Ayan. We'll see you soon. Thank you, Martha. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.